Welcome back to the PML, guys. I am here, Fawn, with my good friend. I was about to say Gormizer, but I was wrong. I, I, I would love to be Gormizer. Kresnick, Kresnick you're, you're I here. I am Kresnick, but me. if I could have been Gormizer, I would be much happier. Okay, well, I mean, hey, I mean, I'm glad that you're here with me regardless, <laughs> regardless of who it is. Thank you guys so much for joining us again for the next set. Penta versus All Business. We were talking about it a little bit before, before the game actually ends up getting yeah. started, about how all of these people are back. Like, all their rosters are back. No more yeah. subs, no more nothing. This is a full power Penta, a full power All Business. Yeah, and these are teams that, I mean, could be close. That last match was really close. Both these teams got 3 0'd by their respective teams last week. So, Penta mm. bringing back Bolka and Ninu. And All Business now, uh, Slopidopolis out. Bugsy in. Yeah. That could be a big change. I mean, Bugsy's a, hist a historic player being good in almost any role they put him on. Yeah, I mean, that that comes down to, like, really just, like, what how these players play throughout the matchup and how it is that they'll end up evolving as the game goes on. Hopefully we'll see another long set full of chock full of some really sick, absolutely cool stuff coming up to you guys, uh, I believe, after we get to the uh, – after, after we end up getting to the map beds and stuff yeah. like that. But before that, before that – uh, last both of these teams, I believe, they lost three zero last week. Yeah. So was it to was it to each other? Like I'm trying to remember. Like no, no, both teams lost three zero to the teams that just played. Oh right, 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 so, yeah, right, right. Since right, that was three right. two, this could You're be right. a close game as well. That'd be I'd be really excited to see an absolute banger between these teams. Penta haven't really looked like they've been firing in all cylinders since they lost a ton of players. So mm -hmm. if we get into the map bands, we can see get to that and find out who's going to be taken. Yeah, let's take a look at the map bands here. We have Frozen Guard and Frog Isle. Okay. Both maps are gone. They have two more maps that is they've banned as well, both Timber Mill and Fish Market. Now, those are maps that you normally see banned, but what is it? Like, tell me a little bit about what No, what I was just excited right about now. Timber and Fish being out. I mean, oh, I being gone? Yeah, yeah. Those, those kind of really, really wide maps are out. I mean, Timber is specific, mm -hmm. like Sniper, Vertical Flank, Heaven, yeah. seeing that gone. It's kind of a niche map, so they don't want to play into that style. And Fish is just is really wide. I mean, Quad DPS has been playable right, on right. Fish. It really is just hell for tanks a lot of the time. So yeah. some out-of-the-way stuff being banned, so I'm expecting to see some standard. I mean, some of the maps have been more standard lately. Splitstone, Warders, we'll have to see where mm -hmm. we end up. Well, let's see what the first map is they have in store for us right now, which is Serpent Beach. Very, very first map. A common map. We've seen it today. We saw it actually opening the last set. We did. I, I, oh, I think oh, oh, we, you're right. You're we right. We might actually. see a, a full repeat here. I mean, EU, I, I've always I've always said that they draft a little a little yeah. flowcharty sometimes. We might see some flowcharty map picks here, too, for the rest of the set. But for now, we're on Serpent Beach, a map that goes to 4-3 a lot, a map that has a lot of verticality, a lot of strong defensive advantage. Um Draft is going to decide what team has that advantage on those fights. Yeah, well, immediately they start to ban the Torvald, which makes sense. It's a pretty standard ban. It's what you'd expect to see, really, just from any team, not just all business or Penta. Makoa going to be the second ban of this match right now. They're going to get wow. it a little bit more into You can ban Makoa? Wow, that's crazy. I, 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 I didn't, didn't know that. think see, so. After watching that the last set, yeah. I didn't think you could ban Makoa because <laughs> right? well, he got through basically pick? every single time, yeah. especially after the BCL yesterday. But yeah. Makoa Band taking that kind of skill equalizer off the field. He's great on this map, too, because if yeah. someone peaks high ground a little bit too much, just getting that immediate, like, no, no, come here. Yeah. Stop, stop hiding. Yeah. We, we want to see high. That's the Makoa for you, the scorpion of this game. Me. Atlas is banned as well, as well as Genos. But they pick first pick Ash, and that's something that's Overcome. super interesting. It's something that you see, because I had asked Nick this question yesterday in the PCL, just in general, overall, you and Ash has a lot of staying power. Here. So by automatically yeah. locking her in, it allows them to stay on the point a little bit longer to even contest a Nara if they're going to go that route. But I don't think they will. Yeah. You don't no. normally see that. Most of the time, she's not a point Mew. tank. People run Forge Breaker when they do point tank. It's right, kind right, of right. fallen out. She's going to be used to equalize the high ground, go from hers to the others immediately, or play from the low ground and get that assert dominance right. up there, kind of getting a stun on the back line. If Leon's not ready for it, she can't dash out of the way. That's a free pick. She's Leon's pretty squishy when she's not dashing out of the way. Yeah, they go for the Leon pick on Penta's side. Grover... Khan being Hubbard. Now, here's a situation we had just mentioned the fact about how we didn't think that Ash was going to end up being the point yeah. taking the situation. I, I, I don't think she will be still. Still. I think okay, it so would still be Khan. Because, okay. I mean, he's kind of the hybrid the hybrid main tank point tank, depending okay. on the map. This isn't the best for him, but God, it's better than Ash. Right, right, I mean, right. I, they might still do it. It really depends on how the team wants to play, how slowly they're going to play. If they're going to play with this Grover as their healer and not a supplemental DPS, they might have to play slow. Yeah. I mean, they have two really aggressive tanks, and Grover can get aggressive, but if they get Dove while they're moving forward, he's just yeah, absolute fodder situation. for the enemy team. Yeah, it's a hard situation for him to be in. I see they locked the Ying, hovering the Willow as well. Now, Ying, her illusionary rift, her defensive, like, it's yeah. a pretty defensive ult. It allows people to stay in the fight a lot longer. Now, the thing is, is that I see Ying being picked. I saw Grover pick as well, like, obviously over there on all business. But what is T Pensa saying to themselves what that, like, we need a Ying here? We need to be able to counter this situation at the It's, it's raw healing. 
I think right, just like okay. the healing output to compare with the Grover. Also, by not having CC on your healer, mm -hmm. you kind of open up resilience to be a Wave more niche buy. Done, so maybe right. they'll get more out of the Inara when she ults or whatever their other tank is, if they have a CC ultimate as well. Okay. That gets more value too, you know, just making them have to spread items. Now, Bulldozer might be a factor for them if they're thinking that as well. All right, okay, that makes a lot of sense as well. I see that Maive and Victor are both okay. picked in this map as well, which is what, you know, that's a general, like that's, those are pretty general picks. Those are picks it is that I expect to see coming out on Super Beach. Victor, not as much. He's not as staple. He's more staple in the PCL as we've talked about before. But on this map, it's a little bit, like, really, when you get into PC, it's a little bit different. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, looking at these two drafts, I think both teams are kind of all over the place. I'm going to give the edge to Penta. I think the okay. double point tank plus the Willow to counter the Grover is right. going to be enough to edge it out. Well, that's it. Both teams are locked in. We're going to throw it right down to the casters to get into this first game. Thank you, gentlemen. Set to a three versus four matchup in our first region of the day. About to get underway here. I'm still Dolson down here in the caster booth. Joined by Gore Miser for your second set of the day. A little more Serpent Beach for you, Gore, and, uh, and a team that won MSI but has maybe fallen down just a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely one of the things we've noticed. I mean, last week was probably the worst case scenario. I do have right? needed. Two subs that came in right. to play, and it's just like, man, your first match against our team, who has been your rival, and you don't even have the full roster. Right. Like, so Penta, I think, coming in this, this week, Maybe with a different form, but the same thing can be said for all business on the other side. Last week wasn't exactly the best for them, but you'll notice Slopidopolis no longer there. And I believe Bugsy should be playing today. Of course, uh, Anthony back on the ones and twos for us in the back, observing this one. Ninu uh, back in the lineup here. I mean, that's a huge loss, not having Ninu, uh, not having Ninu last week, of course, under alternate duty uh, in the PPL, looking to help his team find a win here, but unbelievable with the first kill in this engagement. It's already going to force Penta back. They do have somebody sat on the point right Ooh. now, though, so although they're getting swept out in this fight, the Barrack is going to garner 75, 78% already uh, for, for Penta. If you had asked me who was doing that at the beginning of that, I would have been like, yeah, Ovim's got to be down yeah, there, right? Like, it's the Inara. Barrack's going to be fighting. Coriel's just mounted up down there. He's got his turret ready. He's got a barricade trying to keep himself going. But the biggest thing is, like you said, Penta, you know, coming in, Ninu, having his, like, period of time where he's gone into the BBL either as a sub or when he was playing for Virtus Pro. But the same thing can be said for all business. Bugsy has been hands down the, one of the most flexible players, I would say, yep. outside of Alex now, who I would argue is the most flexible. And so I want to see how he does, but so far, I mean, like, he's been getting kills. Nothing crazy yet. Yeah, nothing just as of yet. Looks like Ninu's going to pop the ultimate as well. Overtime starts for all business here. They need to find some kills. Ninu helps Cize find number one, has to back off. Xenos hitting some long-range daggers as well. Overtime. Whirlwind's going to cancel out a lot of the damage that all business is outputting right now. Bugsy trying to find the daggers. Ninu's going to clean that one up very quickly, and Penta find themselves back on the point. Either team's point to win. It's whoever finds the kills in all business. They're the ones on the back foot is Penta. Or, excuse me, all business are the ones who find point number one. It's just so close right at the very end. 99-99. Overtime takes down and Coriel was just a few feet off. I think Pinto were trying yep. to get aggressive, trying to zone out all business. Unfortunately, it kind of worked against them in that case and now they end up having to figure out this defense. Luckily, they don't have too much to worry about once they're on the high ground. Until a certain dominance comes up, I don't expect we're going to see Ash use that to get up there, but it's always possible. But you're going to have to keep your eyes on well, Bugsy on the mage. He's yep. going to be looking to try and get up there, and, and he's going to cause a lot of disruption in this area right here. But Cize with a good shot gets him down almost immediately. Cize with the help of Illusory Rift in the back line, giving Penta just a little bit of extra healing. Seismic Crash as well stalls things out. Unbelievable force back, as is the rest of all business. Nice wall stops the shoulder bash from getting too much. Maybe would have been uh, staggered out regardless, but a little flashy play there from the Inar. Penta holds firm. On defense to start off here, Leon for Cize. Hit and miss to start off this game, but uh, mostly hits there in that last defensive fight. You know, I've always wanted to see Ovin versus Unbelievable, but I always thought it was going to happen in the PPL. I always thought it was going right. to be, because like prior to picking up Lazy, Unbelievable being on Na'Vi, and Ovin has just almost always been a phenomenal EU point tank. And it's just one of those matchups that I think is going to be 
a rare hit, right, where right. it comes through where, where the point tanks can determine so much of the matchup and can determine so much of how the flow of the game goes. I mean, Ovim, not only with that wall earlier, but in this case, going down, can swing a fight one way or the other. Good examples of uh, impactful Inaras in our first set of the day. <laughs> True. Second or third top damage. Those first two hours of games. Right, first two hours of games. Contested matchup. Another contested matchup already starting off here. Penta looking to get themselves on the board for the first time today with a successful defense here at Seize Day. Pulling off that high ground. Bugsy's forced back a little bit. One more shot will do it from either, to be honest with you. It's going to elect to live and fight another day. Pounce is going to be ready to get him back up onto that high ground. 2 2 with the first kill. Immediately answered back, though. Ninu for Khan. Contested with three seconds left in this one, and Cize firing down. Needs to hit one more shot, two more maybe, to clean up the victor here in this case. And another illusory rift is maybe going to keep Penta in just a little bit longer. It should keep him rolling. I mean, you can see Ovim Health literally resetting back to full, even though he was so close to dead. And that's going to garnish him a defense if they can clean up a couple more kills. They do lose two big members in the process. Cize, Nino, Booth going down makes it a little more difficult to try and keep yourself in control. And Coriel, what are you doing so far up? I mean, he is way out of line. Yeah, and uh, he loses his life for it. Klosar stays alive. The victor doing the damage, fighting uh, despite Barrack being behind his shield there in that case. Nino falls in what looked like a good defense from Penta. So I think it really hangs in the balance. Sees a some good rotational shots onto Bugsy. Cleans that one up. Getting aggressive, a little bit too aggressive though. Zenos finds the axe. Drops Sise and Barrage could just seal this one up. Gets a kill, helps an unbelievable drop off Ovum. And now it's all down to Corio on the barrack. Ninus, and he's not gonna be able to stay alive and contest very long. Now just last ditch efforts here in all business. Point number two. After Penta looked like they were good on the defensive side. I mean, that kill for Ninu was really good there, but honestly, when you, I'm going to dissect nothing on the side of Penta. It's the 8, 2, and 10 victor. Klosar yeah. is blowing things out of the water. Like, that barrage was very solid. Before that, he was on a, or when he hit that, an 11 streak. Before that, a 10 streak. Holding up angles that, again, you don't typically get to see. Victor honestly doesn't come through too often. But the 62,000 damage that he's doing, the slash line that he's doing, are very, very difficult to argue against. Klosar is blowing this one away. And uh, looking for, for anything to keep them in this one. Caught twos, record two as well for them. But already record three for Klosar. Cauterize three for Toot Toot. And then you get caught two bulldozer and wrecker on Bugsy down at the bottom. Full Red Ranger. Full Red Ranger build. A certain dominance drops down. Dome shoot onto the high ground as well. Nino with a great angle on Tutu here. Forces the dash away. Not going to be to any sort of safety. His unbelievable trades back with one on to Volca, though. Getting rid of Klosar would be huge here. And Nino's at least able to do that. And a couple of good axes here. Might be able to make a difference. But with Klosar down, Xenos down. It's going to open up this point a little bit more. Unbelievable. You can withstand a lot of damage, but I don't know if you can withstand, well, only three members worth of Pinta looking at you. And it's really, really solid play. And a really good fade oh. flight into just really good blast damage from Minu so far. Couple kills, tried it back and forth. Penta finally getting themselves on the board here. Fast cap helping them out. But regardless, they won the team fight. It's not really a second chance for all business in that one. Both teams using the full suites of ultimates. Overpower came out a little bit late there for Toot Toot on the all business side. But Penta nonetheless get themselves on the board for the first time in the set. Ninu, great mid fight there as well. And that Faith Flight does exactly what you need it to. It's one of those scenarios, you know, when you look at Bomb Kings, like, hey, play like a pro for him, play like a pro for Khan. Both times were mentioned that Khan is either an easy matchup for Bomb King or Bomb King is a terrible matchup for Khan because he can just hit around the shield. That's what that Faith Flight enabled. Tutu was in a very good, uh, aggressive position. Oh no! But that Faith Flight just got above his shield. He couldn't block everything that was coming at him. How did Ovim live there? Yeah. Other than just... Sorry, you were making a, a good really point, good. but all I saw was like a sliver of help on Ovim. Plays the wall to uh, to his favor. Maybe some RNG on the spread there. There it is. Finally, Tutu gets a little revenge from Ovim escaping last time around. Penta not going anywhere anytime fat or anytime soon. Bugsy traded out. Gets a kill on a CZ. Loses his life in exchange, though. Standing at about halfway left, remaining in this payload push here. Penta, two ultimates ready to go. Enlightenment, Dome Shield will be ready soon, uh, but 
Seismic Crash, the only one readily available when you have Whirlwind Barrage, Overpower all ready for all business. Ready to get this one started off. Halfway through the timer, halfway through the payload push is Penta here. They need to find a pick, some way to take this high ground back from all business. Bugsy dropping off Ovum though, likely spells a stall. And the biggest thing you noted there is how to take the high ground back, right? I mean, Willow can get up there, not reliably, and honestly, probably not enough on her own. I would love to, as like, whenever the chance comes around, probably towards the end of the round, beginning of the next round, look at Ovim's loadout because he got up there, and that's not typically someone you somewhere you go. He is running Summit 4, so expect yes. to see him go for the high ground. The problem is, is you've got Willow, you've got Inara. Neither are the best at securing it on their own. Both of them would like to go with each other. Otherwise, you're just maybe kind of committing yourself to a death. All business own this. They have yeah. no one really to stress about. And if Anara gets up there, if Willow gets up there, they just do what they've been doing. It's like, cool, we're going to turn three pairs of eyes maybe away from the payload for two seconds, but kill you off. Killing off the last few members up and over the head of Toot Toot goes over him. A double kill for the Khan is going to seal up this side, making a triple now. Maybe a quadra towards the end of it. He Gets got the it. unofficial quadra. I'll call it a quadra for Toot Toot to round out this side. 10, 5, and 15 for the Khan. 8, 4, and 16 still doing the damage as close are. I mean, Penta have huge amounts of damage in the form of, uh, you know, 2 through 3 on the charts. We're all business are finding all the kills. And the control of the map, I yeah. think, is going way more heavily in their favor. With no Faith Flight at the beginning of this round, definitely. Well, I mean, I guess last round they also came in without Illusory Rift, but not going to have it anytime soon either. You're at probably one of the most distinct disadvantages that you've been in all game, and that's saying something considering Five, the last defense. Four, they don't have three, as much to deal two, with Tutu. They don't have as one. much to stop Bugsy. And so this is going to rely very heavily on the front lines for Penta. Yep. Get those ults off. Dome Shield's not going to do anything, but a good seismic crash can still save the day. Wrecker 3 on Closar is going to shred right through a Dome Shield the moment. That one comes out, Ooh. misses the overpowers, all business. A bit of a break there for Penta as the rest of them are holding up that high ground. Ovim left out to dry a little bit. The rest of his team has regressed from the fight, but Ovim's left standing on the point. Gets themselves up to 42% with fast cap. Now all business are going to begin. Their point stand, Dome Shield as well onto the low ground. Bugsy, no kills in this fight just yet. Ninu using the Faith Flight, trying to get himself to an, into a good position. Dropping off to Victor would be huge in this case. One, two more shots, maybe we'll do it. Chooses not to get too aggressive. Wraps around the back of the waterfall, but the Victor lives on. And unfortunate for him, that's probably going to end up coming back to bite him as he's going to be able to get the shots. Finally gets rid of the kill and a double kill on top of that. Ninu getting aggressive now onto Xenos. They're going to be able to zone him out. Yeah, and with a fast cap on their side, things are looking good for Penta. As we maybe jump into a quick pause here, all business were in a good spot, but uh, Ninu making good on some of that kill, and that's the AOE potential that a Willow brings, especially yep. a Wrecker 3 Willow, just shredding through a lot of the shielding that that brings. And honestly, I mean, that that's, I think, just the back end of having a victor, needing to de just deal with good, consistent backline damage. Finally, Ninu able to give Penta a bit of a break there. The biggest thing, though, it's always been on the back of a Faith Flight so far, yeah. and that's kind of where I, like, that one was unique because he got into the position for from Faith Flight, then was able to carry it out without Faith Flight. Sure. But I'm wondering if, you know, without using this ult, can you accomplish the same things? Because it just hasn't been as consistent from him. Right. And, I mean, even though, you know, they're poised right now to potentially get the zone and capture this point, what are you going to do when you get it? It's, again, dog chasing car. You caught the car. Where do you go from there? The high ground seems like it's forbidden for you. And they do lose Ninu at the very end of it. So there's a little bit of opportunity, just not a lot. Yeah, a little for bit of a business. trade back. Maybe Xenos pull things Ooh, back in their hello. favor. Seismic crash rips down from Ovim here, locks up the ash. No assert dominance ready is unbelievable. Goes down as well. Tutu really the last one who's going to be able to maybe contest this one as he's the last of the frontliner standing. Ninu back in this fight around the backside. Tutu too many angles to watch. And Penta ends up sealing point number two. A little bit of drama there towards the end. But Penta nonetheless win the day. I like how they, they go back in for the fight, the way all business re-aggress into that. It would have maybe helped if Closer was a little closer, but you also recognize nice. that this is going to be a... Uh, kind of a losing fight, right? Yeah. Like, you, you don't want to commit all five of you to the very beginning of a fight that might not go your way. Where you can set up for this. I mean, there's no reason for Closar to feel any pressure if he's up here. Yeah. Because you just saw Willow poked her head out for a second. 
and immediately got bursted down. But now Ying, Willow, and I believe Inara are going to be up on the high ground. Still have to be careful, though. Catches one too many shots from CZ, and Ovim's able to make good on that damage. Toot Toot trades back on Ninu. Keeps things a little bit even in this case as Penta looks to try to tie this game up. I mean, they've been getting kind of crushed up to this point, but nonetheless, a chance to tie it up if this payload ends up going through. Ovim has to back off. He's going to regroup with his team. They have three ultimates, Pentadude, Dome Shield, Fey Flight, Enlightenment as well. Three business, three ultimates for all business. Uh, Barrage, Overpower, Midnight, ready to be used. Bugsy getting himself involved as well. This is exactly where we saw Penta get stalled out last time, Gore, and they have not made much more progress on the ground. You know, I'm just going to pick it apart. I think Three's business could be a very good sitcom, like a yeah. spiritual successor to Three's company. Sure. Is there a sitcom with the, the name business somewhere? Probably. Strictly I don't. I'm, business I'm not up and up on my sitcoms. Yeah, I'll no. be honest with you. You got the game shows. It's not quite the uh, <laughs> not quite the sitcoms. But uh, back on the payload. 45 seconds left. Still halfway to go. And, and honestly, I mean, I think this just this is a great example of high ground and the advantages that it brings because. Right here, this double bridge high ground is exactly where they stalled out last time. It's exactly where they're stalling out this time as well. 30 seconds left, and, and again, it's just so difficult to get up there. Like, it's there's so much on all business that can deal with any high ground pressure Pinta can actually get that the only time it was successful was when they were able to just barely sneak three people up there. And again, for those three, you have to get Ninu up there from his dash, so he has to be not under pressure, much like that. You have to put an illusion up there and use your movement ability to get up there if you're Ying. Yeah. And then you have to drop your wall as an R. Like, you almost lose all defensive anything you have just to get onto the high ground and try to just take it away. Not even guaranteed control. You're really selling out to just try to take the high ground there. Not much left once you get there. All business successful on the defense yet again. 3-2 is where they stand. Lost the last two mid-fights. Penta won the last two mid-fights. 10-3 and 14 for Ninu's done some good damage. Finally overtaking Klosar, notably, is Cize. Actually, four, I mean, three out of the top four damage is all for Penta. Four out of the bottom five are all for all business, but, uh, you know, they've held firm on the defense nonetheless. Point spawning in 15 seconds. 17th Street for Xenos as yeah. well. Like, so not only do you have maybe the damage shifting over for Penta, but the problem is the damage seems to be finding Bugsy, 10, 11, Five, and 13. Like, you're, four, you're taking care of the three, Mave pretty easily. Two, the tanks one. are getting shut down. Not as often, but enough, consistently. Close SARS, been hit or miss as to whether or not you can get them. Xenos has been getting away, and I think that's going to be the biggest issue. Yep. A lot of that's going to be from the last, like, from the defense, but even looking at what he's been able to do, a healer not dying, especially a Grover, is bad news. Ninu looked for the flank there, didn't find anything. A certain dominance from Unbelievable up onto the high ground is going to buy him a little bit of time. CZ as well into the overpower. Two kills for all business, none for Penta. They're already at 51% as well. They've been the ones fighting from the point this entire time. Corio has to burn the dome shield just to stay alive in this case. Honestly, all business will be okay with that. They're just zoning out Penta right now. Sure, stay into your dome shield. You're nowhere close. Ovim's going to have to get in. 93%, 96%. The oh, body blocks body might blocks. save it up and over the summit. He ends up landing on the head of Khan down onto the point. But good zone, good body blocking there seals it up. <laughs> Ovim with the post-game Goomba Stomp. It doesn't get the kill, but it still looks really funny to watch Anara bounce around. But Bugsy, I think, honestly. like A lot of individual plays at the very end, finding kills here, left, right, whatever. Yeah. The body blocks are what saves that. Otherwise, you're in overtime. Otherwise, you give Penta maybe a little bit more time to react and come back in. And he just says, no, it stops. Yeah, when, and what a convincing, honestly, convincing performance from all business. Penta, now you could argue they're your favorites coming into this one. Just breaking six digits as Coriel down there. I mean, damage numbers all inside of Penta this time. Yeah. Only close are up higher on the all business side healing as well i mean technically kind of in favor of penta 2-2 two -two with 7k healing really pulls it back for all business i mean if you're looking at those stats damage wise you're saying maybe penta won uh, but 7-2 and 29 for the healer 12-7 and 19 for 2-2 two -two yeah. on the con controlling performance from all business. I think a lot of this comes down to while all business didn't have the damage numbers in their favor, you look at the slash lines of Ovum, Ninu, and you kind of see, okay, well, 4 and 11, 11 and 14, like it, they don't all add up for sure. them. And, and mainly when you're looking at the fact that Ovum 
even though he had a lot of very prominent moments in the game, spent a lot of time dead. It definitely, I think, hurt them in, in terms of controlling the objective. Yeah, most of those are going to be probably racked up while they're trying to aggress, but right. it didn't help anymore when it happened on the point. Well, you gave him a little bit of a shout out. Bugsy back in the action on the Mave this time around. I mean, 1.5 KDA, 10 and I think it was 10 and 14. Lots of assists, though. I mean, wasn't the flashiest slash line but made good on so much of the damage his team set up. And it's just, I think, the, the one thing that Bugsy has always had, and the only person right now in, in competitive that I really think I could give this to other than him would be Alex, but he's been incredibly flexible as a player, being able to switch not only between three different roles, but play any of the champions in those roles right. as well. And so coming back in, playing this Maeve and playing it at that level, like, yep. again, not a pretty slash line, but he got the job done, which is really all you need. He's playing the objective, not playing for, well, Kills. Yeah, he got the win, and, and that's really that all that matters here at the end. Great start from all business. Their team that kind of in our last split had some ups and downs, ran into uh, Penta and Sour team a good bit, but they uh, they win game number one. Penta trying to recapture a little bit of that MSI magic as they go down 1-0 in our second set of the day. Will they come back? Find out right after this. Alienware the official PC provider of the Paladins Premier Welcome back to the PML, guys. Really, really appreciate you guys continually tuning in for some awesome action today. I'm Fawn. Once again, Kresnik. I am joined by him, my good friend. Uh, all business taking that first game on Super Beach yeah. uh, pretty convincingly, actually. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, they, I think they they had a pretty solid draft for it. I, I thought that Penta were going to have the advantage going in, but I think all business just were, were wild enough with how they played. I yeah. think they rotated enough, and I mean using their characters the way they did, like at the very end, Bugsy getting the body block right. onto Ovim to stop him from touching, even though he tried to summon it over him. It's like little things like that are what can edge a double off tank kind of where off rolling everything comp into your favor. Right, exactly. And Toot on the con being yeah. a very, very prominent force throughout that game. 12, 7, and 19, I believe. He was yeah. a very, very, not necessarily an unstoppable force, but he came to play. He, he did an extremely good job just in general <laughs> overall throughout the entire, the entirety of that game. Yeah, I, that, that too. I also think Ovim, I think he lost a little bit of value in his build with the Summit, yeah, honestly. Because yeah. Summit, yeah, it's great for getting on high ground, but you don't need it. There, there's a way right. to get up. I mean, that map, you do need the verticality, but you don't need it for Inara on that map. But moving forward, we'll see what map we go to if he's going to need Summit on whatever is coming next. Looks like we are Warders. Okay, okay, okay. We we, we okay. have a map. It is not one of the one of the four or five being played or right, ice mines. Yeah. So a little bit of little bit of versatility, I think, in map picks here. Let's see what comes up. Yeah, and one thing I actually forgot to mention, but I think it's a good point to mention it now more than anything is that Warders Gate is open. Most of the time, you do try and see people try and ban that out, try and counter yeah. that map. It's a pretty common ban. Yeah. It's because it's it's pretty different from other maps. Right. And when it came out, some teams just started permit banning it, and now they're like, well. We don't want to learn it now. Right, you know, exactly. like uh, NIP, I think, was one of those teams, at least in the PPL, that banned Warders Gate. Like, mm. I think they banned Splitstone and Warders Gate for every week until almost the, until this recent week where they had that close game with the Knights. Yeah, I mean, it was a... I mean, it, it was a like it's 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 a pretty common ban, like it was like yeah. exactly like you were saying, like it was like I, I was saying. That's why I was so surprised to actually see it open. Uh, however, Genos Willow, yeah, it's a good map. Genos and Willow are banned along with Makoa and Torvald. Four bans are gone. That leaves Atlas open, which is what yeah. Penta is hovering right now, time. and that's something that you don't normally see. You don't normally see them 
pick not necessarily them pick Atlas, but you don't normally see Atlas open is a more better is a better way to put yeah, it. Yeah, usually a lot of teams want to get rid of it, but all business get a pretty good end of this trade here. They're gonna most likely end up with Khan, Ash, the tank line. They had last game that went to pretty good success for them. I mean two toot on that point, tank control plus Ash running on the side. We'll see if that's what they choose to lock in. Looks like they want the back line instead. Yeah. They say, I mean, in this they game, can play with a point tank too. It's not like Khan Ash is this there end all no be all point tank. Ground. Right, yeah, Khan Leon. I understand that. I, 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 I can see why they go for the picks. Khan is open, so you all, you, yeah. you want to grab him. You normally want to grab him whenever you see him open. You normally see people grab him whenever he's left open. Leon, a pretty good pick as well. They're hovering Pip and the Anara Pip. Now I can understand why they're so going for Pip. In my opinion, you can like. You know, like correct me if this isn't the, like the case, but Pip is good at countering on-point presences here. with his evil mojo. Yeah, yeah, it, it's pretty solid. I mean, it right, depends yeah. on the other the other tank, right? If it's a Nara, right. she can Mother's Grace through that, so she has exactly. the, the chance to survive the evil mojo. Late game, it gets a little harder. Late game, Tyra kind of shines a little more because right, the firebomb, right. no one really gets blast shield to counter that, right. and you can't really CC the resilience counters evil mojo, but you can't really counter crossfire outside of just blocking the Tyra. Yeah, so are you saying that they're gonna try and like possibly like run for the Tyra here, like seeing this bear because they don't really have shield pressure. I, I think they would be too, they would be too point focused if they did that. They're gonna most likely have a more backline style right, backline, okay. probably what's left. Cassie, Victor, Furia coming in. So they might actually want an aggressive flanker yeah, instead. Yeah, they might try and nope. go for it. You're, right. actually, you're actually right on that call. Tyra instead, they are gonna play pretty point focused. That's a lot of pressure on this Atlas it's on the side, watching. actually. He's yep. probably gonna be Our the only one that's the like rushing. really bullying the, the off tank position. Right, exactly. And that's so interesting to see, especially like the Hunter's Mark being present for Pip. Pip already does a lot of damage, right? Mm -hmm. Like him, like assuming that Tyra is going to take Hunter's party, which is normally what you see oh, yeah. her taking, the pip itself is going to be a lot more dangerous, coupled with the inflame as well. That's going to be a yeah. very, very aggressive composition. Yeah, a very, very aggressive yeah. composition. Catalyst on top of hunting party on right, top exactly, of inflame exactly. means that that pip's going to kill you. But if they can just get the burst damage on him, if they have that caught three, it's going to get a lot harder. Well, both teams are locked in once again for game two. We're going to throw it right down to the casters. Let's get right into it. Game two about to kick off all business. Strike first on the board. Penta down at zero. Looking to turn things around here on Warders Gate. They have themselves a pip as well, Gore. Saw a little bit of it on Bright Marsh earlier today. Hit or miss, some misses, some hits. What do you think about Pip where he stands now? I like Pip still. I think he it's one of those things it's it's very much just going to depend on who's playing him and who's holding him, but I think you have to be just as scared if you are on Penta of Bugsy's EV. Now, I haven't seen it in a while, so I can't attest yep. to what exactly it's going to bring, but it used to be really, really good, and so I expect it's still going to be really good. The other thing that catches my eye very much at the beginning is Atlas making it through, and Atlas has, has yep. swung games almost single-handedly. It's not a guaranteed win for him, but he's, he's strong, and he's very difficult to take on. They'll, uh, they'll need him to make an impact on the side of Penta, they want to avoid going down 2-0. Although, as we saw in our first hit of the day, that's not necessarily an end-all be-all. As uh, One Trick Pony fight back the next two to take us to a game five. Already, Bugsy getting very aggressive. One, two more maybe of those shots land, and you got a Tyra who's in a much more awkward position than she would have been just a moment before. Both teams kind of nodding up there on the point. 24, 27% respectively, and Bugsy just that'd be a nuisance wrapping around the backside Ninu into the healing tops himself off already pip just a little bit of damage but Tutu finds the first kill onto the atlas nonetheless and just being able to pick him off now you get rid of the healer and it's just check marks from there right you're just like okay cool this guy's dead this guy's dead this guy's dead we're moving on forward and it was one of those things all business especially with that flank early it didn't go the way I think they ex expected sure. it to. I think they were hoping maybe a little bit more separation from Pinta. And that's the one thing Khan kind of brings is forced separation. I'm going to throw you over there so that guy and you are both alone now. You maybe get a little bit more aggressive, allows Bugsy to kind of come around the side a little bit more. And all of a sudden you open the door for well, more success. And they drop off Ninu before he's even able to get in, get a touch on that one. So all business already. Backing up their hot start in game one with a faster one even in uh, game two here into the ice block. Bugsy mitigating so much damage, winning the 1v1 up against the Atlas. Coriol not able to flex those Atlas muscles just yet in this one as all business. Four members streaking out, rounding that first corner here. Look how aggressive Tutu's getting. I'm just going to dismount as many as possible, maybe catch a little damage in the meantime, but the payload moving forward nonetheless going to be throwing the alignment right into the wall there. Unfortunately for them, 
means it's just gonna end up going towards nothing. Close Star gets chased down, gets killed off. 2-2, kind of in a precarious situation. Looking to get aggressive. Commander's grab into the hole. No! Ooh, trying to get it. Not quite going to be able to. And unfortunately, I think that's going to be 2 Toot's death. He was trying to do whatever he could with the most that he had. And now another team. So Sour Team have run it. But Pinta are also running the Solar Blessing for Furia as opposed to Cherish, which, again, is something we see. Mm -hmm. And the, the biggest difference is just how much focus you have to put on those beams and where they're coming from. It also removes maybe a little bit of utility from Furia, potentially finding like solo kills. But admittedly, if you're playing support, that's not where your mind is at. You're not going, right. how high can I get my KDA? So they're going for the Speak maximum for yourself, healing Gord. that you can get. Speak for yourself. <laughs> that's all I'm thinking about when I'm playing support is uh, how high can I get my KDA? Yeah, uh, Furia. I worked out for Penta just as of yet. Commander's grab yet again. The setback, though, gets Bugsy around the corner here. Coriol, three versus one, three versus two, kind of up on the opposite side here. Down into the drink. With no setback, no second chance. 2-2 gets that kill. 42 seconds left. Starting to round this final corner very quickly. Khan just bullying out that high ground. Ovim's the last alive. Going to be able to contest just for a little bit of time. Right back behind that pillar. Is going to have the wall to maybe stall things out. The commander's grabbed away. If they're able to kill off this Inara, this payload's going to go through. But the respawns in from Penta are going to stall this one out. Dojo's going to get dropped to try and buy some space just to be able to alleviate some of the pressure, but it's not going to be enough. Cize with a nice firebomb is going to be burning down two of the front lines here. Going to get a triple kill for him, looking for a fourth. Drops off. Does not get the Quadra. Coriel, though, gets Bugsy. Penta forced them back, and <laughs> that was a, a maybe pixel width away from going through. Penta holds strong on defense. A triple kill on, uh, on the Tyra. Stalls things out. Penta get themselves back on the board. All business. Very close to pushing that one through on defense. Use a little bit, overpower only to 50%. Whirlwind as well, Dome Shield all used to try to stall things out. Crossfire from CZ. Seismic Crash. Do have Evil Mojo, and that, that's kind of where my eyes go. So impactful, or the, the potential, I should say, of that ultimate. So impactful uh, for Ninu. Had a tough start to this game at 2-4. and four. I mean, when you're looking at the way last round started, a lot of the problems that were caused for Pinta around the objective were 2-2. If you are within the mind, and I think Pinta are, to just we're going to evil mojo one guy and kill him, then that's an easy target to be called out. It's just stop him from causing any havoc in the back line. Stop him from creating any space for anybody else. If you're lucky, you might be able to find Bugsy at the same time. But admittedly, just getting rid of Khan is huge. And Flame is going to start off Penta. On an aggressive foot here, Bugsy drops the Ice Storm as well. No kills. You hear Evil Mojo. Are they able to get the kill before it times out? They're not. Right around the corner goes the Barrack. No cooked chicken this time around. And as a result, all business able to drop the rest of them. Toot toot on the con on the low ground. Double kill. And it's really Ovim last standing behind the wall here. Xenost might get it. It's Klosar instead. That's a convincing collapse there from all business. That might have been the worst case scenario for Pinta coming yeah, into well. this. Was you use the inflame and the evil mojo, and you didn't get a single kill. And you also <laughs> died. It's not that the died. fight like, stalled out. It's that you, you you literally lost. Can't do anything about it. And it was so close to being able to kind of set themselves up again for success there. It's just watching that barrack pop out of that shell, or I guess pop out of that chicken form breaking the polymorph, yep. and knowing that you did that with a damage amp, knowing you did that with a moose bean amp, like he still got away from you, it just kind of rubs salt in the wound. And, uh, you'll, you'll have a little bit of extra salt in the wound now that you've even lost the next midpoint because of it. All business, looking for point three, trying to get this payload pushed through. Very close last time. Unsuccessful in their efforts, though. Ice Storm is all that's ready for all business. Dome Shield soon, nothing ready for Penta. Just some good old fashioned. Who can kill who? Ninu gets the first one on a close R, forcing back Xenost as well. Who's going to find death? This is maybe what you look for a little bit more in the pit, but Bugsy is able to come to the assist. That uh, grabs that kill. Intermittent trades, I think, go in favor of uh, Pent on the defensive end here. All business forced back. Bolka is where my eyes are going to have to kind of lie. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily because, well, he's getting return kills, although that's definitely helping. But. His inflame, his impact, where he is and if he lives, is honestly kind of feeling like it's do or die for Pinta. Like it, it, once he's gone, much like any support, you lose a lot of your staying power. But sure. unfortunately for Pinta, that has been their defensive power. That has been their ability to fight back on the point. And that's going to be one of the issues with the beam. Ooh, is wow. that 
if you're dead and you respawn, it's going to be a little further, or a little closer, I guess, further you have to travel to get that heal back up. It's going to be a little more work, I think, that your team has to do. And, you know, I think I was talking with Kresnik about it earlier, but it's that argument of is having to coordinate around this healing beam going to distract your team from doing something maybe they should be doing in that moment? Like, is, is it worth that sacrifice? Right. So far for Pinta, it's been kind of mixed. Yeah. Been on shaky ground right here. Crossfire in the back line comes out. No kills just yet for Cize. Maybe some good targets down low. That's a good grenade as well. Nice double stun. He's going to lock up a couple members of all business. Nini with the first kill, but Bugsy, a good ice storm onto Cize. Counters this one out. Gets a little bit of healing for himself around the backside. Barrick might win that engagement. Bugsy with the double, 2-2 two -two with one. Unbelievable gets his name in the kill column as well. And now it's down to Ovim, who's trapped behind his own wall. Zero seconds on the Tyra, two on both Atlas and Furia coming back from base. They're not going to be able to get in range in time as long as the dismounts are good in all business. A great final fight puts, them, puts themselves one point away from going up 2-0. And the body blocks again. That's the thing I yep. think that, that is just standing out to me is just their ability to recognize these moments of, I'm just going to run into you. Like, I'm going to stop you from moving here. And you have two, three members of the team forming that wall to make sure they don't go forward. And... Again, this round, I think actually even more this round than the last round. Bugsy kind of stepped wow. up and was making a lot more noise as this EV, a lot more kills, a lot more of an impact. 10 4 and 8 now. And again, not going to be top damage, not going to be out blowing anything out of the water, but between him and Toot Toot, there's almost no way to control the side fight. I mean, when you look at the, the kind of Khan and Atlas matchup, I guess. I mean, they're both they're both banned out so consistently, and Tutut has just had an infinitely larger impact on this game than Coriol's been able to. I mean, seven streak, nine and two, you know, whatever the con was, it, it, Coriol is just constantly getting picked off. That, you know, maybe no fault of his own. He's able to find a kill in this case as, as well as uh, Cize on the Tyra. He just had a hard time getting involved, whereas Tutut consistently finding kills. Gonna add one more with the overpower as well. Being able to kind of keep himself healed up. Like, he's just been playing this angle. This has been his home. And it's very lucky for him because it's right on the side of Penta. He's causing a lot of trouble for them. And it's around Coriol's wall. It's around everything that you need. Like, he's just playing the perfect angles for the team. And like you said, being aggressive in the moments he needs to. Some Exiles coming through. There's going to be a nice second chance to keep him going. And Evil Mojo finds the kill this time. There's a double kill for Ninu as well. Ovim gets on the board. Finally, the pit maybe starting to pay off. Double kill for Ninu. Double kill for Ovim. Bugsy's the only one able to find anything to pull it back. Penta, though, good team fight from them. The fast cap gets them to 99 in the meantime. And point number two goes the way of blue. And that that's all that Evil Mojo. Like, if Ninu doesn't get that double kill, different story. And it's the same thing that would have happened last round had he gotten the kill. Yep. That's just the difference in impact that it can have in those moments. Choo Choo played out of his mind at the beginning of that, though. And I think yeah. it does come down to where are these members getting picked off. I haven't gotten to hear as much out of this Leon this round. Close are picking up some kills right there. But that was just Razor's Edge, right? It could yep. have flipped just as much in favor of all business. That double kill from Ninu opened the door wide, and then they kicked it down. Yeah, they just kind of battering around the uh, the small wooden front door down in that case, Penta. The hinges were already broken. Like, there was right. literally no reason to kick it down. They just, just wanted to. Show of course. Like yeah, of course. <laughs> All business, though. Uh, they're on defense right now, pushing deep into the base of Penta. Toot Toot as well gets a kill. I mean, it's a, a great microscope onto that matchup. Toot Toot killing off Corio in this case. The con so effective this time around for all business. Good wall is going to trap him off. Bugsy helps him find a kill, though. And this is where all business fine. I'll trade out with you one for one, whatever it may be. They just they need to get back to the payload now. And uh, finally, they do it. Unbelievable's waiting for him. Finally, payload getting moving with about a minute left. Well, and there is the polarizing thing. You see Polka getting two kills in that last engagement. Point fight, he was the first to die. Like that, those are the differences in the impact that this Fury is going to have. Has the inflame, of have to have the Exiles back. All five ults here. Four pits are charged up and ready. And you're in a position, like, I, I always love seeing Evil Mojo held on to, but they're not even going to bother. They're going to go ahead and pop that and look for the kills. They finally make some good on it. Lots of grouped up members. Good for some AoE. The Whirlwind's going to counter it out from all business, though. Bugsy getting a kill in this case. Nino aggressive, jumping forward, trying to find the kill onto the healer here. The Ice Storm gets him down to 47 health. Bugsy, the long-range shot gets a Cordial still alive as well. 30 seconds left for Penta to get this one pushed through. 
All business just five or so seconds away from being reinforced here in this case. Bugsy helps the team stall things out. Stays alive. Ninu set that one up. New Seismic Crash and Evil Mojo as well. All business use Whirlwind, Ice Storm, and Lightment to try to keep themselves in this one. Ten seconds left as Penta give it another shot. Going up to the high ground, playing and flirting with death here for Bugsy. Going to be able to stay alive throughout the engagement. And they've done just Three, enough two. to pull two of Penta's ults out. They forced them to fall back a little bit. They might be able to kill Overmoth right here, right now. It depends on this beam. That's going to be a full reset. That is the strength of that healing. Yes, it might be a little bit of a distraction, but Ovum got a full second life to stand on this Baylor. You get the Inara. That might, might just spell a successful defense for you. Corio, uh, not too much staying power. And, you know, perfect example of that right there. Too much duress from Klosar. Double kill on the Leon. Looking for three. Unable to hit the important shots there. But all for naught as uh, all business find themselves defense. Nonetheless, five ultimates ready for them going into this next mid fight. But some good plays from Ninu in the intermediate time. I think that's one of the biggest things. So Evil Mojo does charge back pretty quickly overall, and I believe he ended that round around 60%. So I'm not worried about him being able to get it soon. I'm worried about what the impact is going to be if they did, don't have it immediately, right? right. Like I, I think a lot of their problem, again, on the side, it's actually 80% here, but it's it's 2-2 two -two that they need to deal with. If you kill him off, you get an evil mojo right at the beginning. That's no overpower for probably 30 seconds Five, you don't have to deal with. Like, four, It just gives three, you a little bit of two, clear room four. on the point. Granted, I think Bugsy right now is also a huge threat. 17 and 7. He's kind of commanding a lot of presence just on his own. Uh, healing numbers pretty even across the board this time around. You're right, 84% on the evil mojo. All business with more effectively ready. Dome shield right away. Penta answers back with the uh, inflame as they wrap around the back side. Whirlwind as well is going to buy all business just a little bit of time. A one for one trade to start this one off as Bugsy looks to get aggressive. That's a good evil mojo. Ninu able to get a double kill for it. Corio as well throws his name into the kill column. And now it's really down to 2 2 to try to pull things back. It's not going to happen as all business gets swept. Half fast cap mechanic here for Penta. There we can poise to tie this game up. Being able to find a 3 3, like, this is where. The, the end of the round actually becomes more interesting than the beginning of it. Unless you can see Bugsy touch now, he's going to get taken out of the sky there by the hit scan presence of the Atlas. But now you're looking at, well, Exile is available. Yes, you just used yep. the Seismic Crash, but based on the charge time, two minutes left, we could see Penta push for the end here. Like, this, yeah. this could be the end round for them. As, uh, as one sided as this game was, it somehow tilted back into the balance here, and Penta. Aggressive, way in front of the payload. I mean, they're they're fighting in the base of all business right now who have to try to pull things back. Bugsy's doing his best. And, you know, as tough as a, uh, of a start as Corio had on this Atlas, really started to find some kills, a little bit more pressure, trying to counteract that of 2-2 two -two, uh, as we've now tied things up to three. Just trying to hold this angle, trying to break open the door once again. It's just so difficult to find it, although Again, where, well, what should not be working for them. Unbelievable there, he finally is gonna go down. I was thinking that was a much shorter fight in my mind, but Toot Toot is getting kills left and right. Klosar, as well as Bugsy, are creating a lot of damage and distance for yep. the team to get forward. And now they're just looking to set up for a defense right here. It's a very precarious corner if you're Pinta to try and bust through, probably one of the hardest areas of this push. But you can get back. There's a little bit of cover you can dance around with in this area. You just need one pick, and it, it, it starts to open up pretty well. All business have their uh, their line in the sand, per se. Everything but the dome shield ready to roll. Onto this defensive side, contested with a minute left, rounding that final corner here. First pick onto Ovim. Looks like Penta are going to go searching for another fight. In just a moment as Bugsy drops Bulka as well. How heavily can you stagger Penta is now the question for all business, and it is pretty heavy as Coriol's timer just gets started. Five seconds left for him. Depending on this zone, all business may have just sealed it. 39 seconds left. Plenty of time for Penta to get back in range, but it's if they're able to get back in range is now the question. I mean, based on that last fight, you kind of have to assume the worst, right? When they're coming in, they did not cinch anything for them. And I wouldn't be upset if this was just a, let's recharge as much as we can. Any ult that we don't have, make sure we get it for next round. And then if you're feeling really confident, you could throw one out there. But that's that's when you know they're trying to commit fully. Probably going to be one or two at first if they yep. do decide to drop ults. But all they need, again, is one kill really gets this yep. thing rolling one more time. Then you can throw some ults, and then it snowballs. Might be 2-2. He's able to uh, 
Dash is way out of that one. A little bit of healing from himself in the Grover as well. Overtime begins. Back down to the blinking red health. Tutu has to drop off. Full heal right now. Corio though, gets just a little bit too much damage returned in onto him. Cize drops right around, back around that back corner. Whirlwind, Dome Shield, both used here for all business just to try to get this point one. Xenos with the long range axe on the Cize as well. Maybe keeps them alive as Ninu's able to pull a couple back. But it looks like Penta are going to be swept here. Although Ovim is contesting this payload very, very close to the point. He's not going to want to burn his seismic crash. The wall is just going to separate him here. We are going to a point seven. Either you're tied up or you're on set point if all business are able to win it. I admire what they're trying to accomplish at the very end there as well, but it was prolong the round, see what we can do. 18, 8, 23, 20, 10, 21. Again, we talk about the impact of the off tank and the flank and how, how much they can do. That's all business right now. Like, Klosar is putting his name up on the board. Unbelievable is having an unbelievable performance for the Barrack. Right. But it very much is coming down to how big of a presence Toot Toot and Bugsy are having, where it's just 60% of this game Five, for their team is three, how well they perform. Three, two, and so I have to say the same thing I've said. Like, I mean, Evil Mojo, you throw it on the Unbelievable, that's just as good a target. But I think you get rid of Bugsy, you get rid of Toot Toot, you're just as happy, if not a little happy. Ninu's been kind of a saving grace for Penta on the opposite side. Evil Mojos have been impactful. You're going to look for a little bit more of the same. He needs to stay alive throughout the Ice Storm. Moxie healing not doing as much as it used to. Still a good bit. Gets topped off. Now he's going to get aggressive. Has Evil Mojo in his back pocket. Unbelievable with the first kill in this case. And Flame for Penta is going to give them a little extra boost in this engagement. Not using the Evil Mojo. Holding on to it just for a little bit too long. Closer finds the kill. Cize the only one with anything on Penta's side here. Double kill for the Leon. Might be a triple, might be a quadra if he's able to do it here. There's the triple. One more shot is for the quadra. Bugsy takes it away. But Penta are swept. They had 51% all business clean up the fight. And they're now trying to cap for the win. That 51% might be their saving grace. The biggest thing about standing on the objective throughout fights like that is getting that little bit of a head start so that if you do retake, it cuts off the chance for right. then all business to come back and again fight back. The problem is you have to be able to come in and retake, and that's going to be a little bit more. Power. And poor Anar is going to get thrown to the Sharks. With the opening kill, so much less contest presence now for Penta. Evil Mojo finally coming through from Ninu. Oh no kills just coming through as of yet, finding some damage. Ninu has to back off. Xenos gets the kill, and it looks like all business, despite dropping a few points in the midterm, are going to be able to seal up this win and send it to set point in the next game. And Ninu, I mean, that was one of the most, I guess, just best evil mojos you could have gotten in that scenario. Yeah. Hey, I hit three. Couldn't follow up on it himself. Couldn't get any damage. Tyro was doing her best. Like, everyone was looking for one of those targets with a little bit of resilience here, and then just good running and good blockage coming around from the map yeah. to make sure that those chickens stay alive. There was so much turnaround potential there. Yep. Didn't happen. And that's, that's well played from all business again. I mean, on paper, See the name Penta, those are your MSI winners. Granted some roster swaps, uh, not the same exact team. Ninu, good game, 126K, 140K though. For Klosar puts him on the top of the charts, right behind Bugsy, I should say, who's at 145K, and what a great game from him on the evening. It was just, again, 2-2 two -two Bugsy kind of commanding the show. Xenos staying alive, being able to pump out a ton of healing. Slash lines very much in favor of the off tank and flank there. Close arb, though, as you admitted or had said and pointed out, 5k behind Bugsy in terms of damage. So even though he didn't quite have the same kill impact, he was doing as much. And wowzers, that is 52 assists there for Xenos. Holy crap. I mean, you're pushing 70 kills total if you're all business here, and Xenos was able to participate in about 60 of them if you're looking <laughs> at assists and uh, kills in this case. And that's what you hope for. I mean, you hope for a support that's not only able to find some kills, but being able to effectively assist in, uh, in three quarters of them, 80% of them uh, on top of it all. Toot Toot, though, sort of down in the trenches. Coriel was the Atlas on the opposite side. Toot Toot kind of filling that same role for all business, and uh, he won the day. And I think this is another showcase. I mean, we've seen Atlas gets banned out a ton, but obviously is not the end-all be-all. This is not win you games just on his own. Khan disappeared from the bands for a long time and was going through, kind of fighting for that yep. first pick position with Ash. And I mean, when you can guarantee get this overpower, when you can play like this, 
he's worth it every single day. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's that is, that is why you pick a con. That's why you yeah. ban a con. What what just happened is why you don't let the other team get con, but they do on all businesses side. Maybe a little bit of a slip up, very close to ending the game early. Yeah. Let uh, Penta back into it a little bit, but nonetheless, find themselves win number two. One win away from sealing up our second set of the day. Stick around after this break to find out. The Paladins Premier League is brought to you by Evil Mojo, developers of Paladins. Guys, all business showing us that they're nothing but all business. Welcome back to this draft situation that we're in right now. Yeah, I took that. I said, said it before, it. and I'm like, that's the easy one. Yeah, yeah uh, true. It works. But I took it. It was. It did. I took I'm glad you did. I'm glad somebody said it. I had to bring it back. Anyway, <laughs> thank you guys for once again for watching. Yeah, 2 0 now. They're up. They're, they are up 2 0. That's good for them. I mean, last season, you'd see this and you would not. You would not expect oh, it. Not but, at you know, all. roster changes coming in, Bugsy coming back. It's This is looking like a totally different squad. Yeah, it is. It's really, really interesting because after, like, watching that game, we see, like, the post stats. Both of us yeah. are, like, looking at the post stats, and we see. The 52 assist Grover. I was walking past the TV in the in the, yeah, yeah, the room yeah, yeah. as we're walking back here, and I'm like, "There's no way that was 52. There's yeah. no way." I had to, I had to go back and see that that was crazy. I mean, they had no way to get onto him. They, we talked about how they yeah. had this like point focus, point breaking comp, and that just left Bugsy and the Grover. They were just free firing. He was free healing. There was just they just could not touch the characters in that match that mattered. Yeah, it was really really hard for them to actually deal with the Eevee in a way that yeah. allow them to maneuver around certain areas and actually try and break through that composition. We're going to see what we have in store, though, for the third map for Game 3, and it will be Bright Marsh. Pretty standard again. Mm -hmm. uh, a snowball-y sort of map. It is standard, but it's a map where once you get around that final corner, if you're yeah. focusing the right targets, it's really tough to take it on the defense. So uh, I think Penta, since this is their loser's pick, I think they just want to snowball this, maybe say if we can win those first couple fights, we can take this to win the rest of the game. And a Grover ban, I, <laughs> 52 assists, I would too. Yeah, uh, to be honest with you, like just knowing that you have that amount of presence on Grover yeah. alone, just knowing that, hey, we have the potential of not only getting like 20 assists, 27, you know, maybe pushing 30, but 52 of it just of from anywhere is like, that's monstrous. Like you're crazy. Yeah. It's a good filler ban for first pick because you don't really want to ban too much power when you're first because, you know, you're clearly you're going to get first dibs on it. Uh, Atlas, though, getting rid of that means that w with the bans that All Business was showing, they have a less, few less power picks up, so they decide to go for the Ash instead. Close some distance. Forward. She can shoot around corners in the apartments on the left, which makes her pretty powerful, but Geno's Khan, a great response from All Business there. That Khan is going to be really solid at bullying out the Ash. It's going to be tough for Penza, I think, on that break. side. Uh, until records are online to get through that con. Yeah, it's going to be a hard-fought battle for Penta, that's for sure. Not only are they down, like, by two points, not by, by two full games, yeah. but Khan once again is secured for who I believe two Neil. is going to be playing him once again. And he's Most shown, likely. Yeah, and, we've sh and he's shown that he can play a very effective con, like, yeah. across both of these games. You oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and he's been, I think, stranger. on the main tank both... No, no, there was Barrack last time, but he's been 
in a very oppressive area both times. I mean, Warder's Gate, it's pretty wide. Khan sometimes can't cross that distance. Lost Certain Beach, he's constantly surrounded by high ground. Way. He's always found the opening, though. Yeah. And this time, he's not going to be on the main tank in that point area. It's going to be Barrack coming in for them. Double shield tank, which means if Penta get another good backline, like a Vivian or a Tyra or something like that, to apply that damage, it could be rough for those tanks to survive. What doesn't they do decide to lock the Mave, though, for all business running. is what they're going for, which I kind of understand that. I mean, being able to get around to just the flank, to be able to try and deal with those backlines, mm -hmm. try to deal with Leon, the people it is, Me that would give you a problem mortal. as Mave, as Eevee, just as anyone, those yeah. precision shots or those hit scan composers a big issue for you, but in response, they pick Furia and possibly Willow. Reach Willow wouldn't be too surprising. Penta already have the Leon. Strong counter to Willow, so getting rid of that means she can Fae Flight a lot more easily, but the a counter pick is still open. All business might choose not to take it if they go for this Cassie. Yeah. She's going to be able to control the side pretty effectively. A big game, as we said before, really good into Inara Ash, right, yeah. uh, just being able to A, burn through the DR, and B, not only knock the Ash out of her assert dominance, but burst her immediately once she's yeah. out. It's gonna be. It's gonna. It's gonna play a huge role in. Like, it's gonna play a huge role that Cassie's. Like, the Cassie's gonna play a huge yeah. role. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Cassie's going to play a ginormous role coming into this game for sure. Like, whose draft do you like better though in this situation? I think I like Penta's since all business didn't get a counter pick towards the Willow. That's true. Okay, yeah. I, I agree with that. That's true. That's true. We're gonna throw it right down to the Cassies to get into game three. Penta versus all business. All business now, just one game away from sealing up our second set of the day against Penta, having them winless in their first two games in the minor league core. Not something I don't I don't think we would have expected that coming into this one. Uh, you win MSI, and then you go winless in your first two games. It's definitely, yeah, no, exactly what you said. Not what you would expect in this kind of scenario for them. Bright Marsh might be the one that does it all. It's just. I mean, you look at it, first week, subs coming in, this week maybe some growing pains as they come through. But all business, like, they're not someone to mess around with. They're not no. the same all business from last no. split. Although, I guess, you know, in a similar fashion, last split did begin with Bugsy. They looked really good at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then Bugsy, I think, ended up not necessarily leaving the team, switching to so the sub role and letting some other people come in sure. for him. And the team didn't quite do as well without him. So you kind of have to look at whether or not that's going to be the case this split. As of right now, though, they do have them, and they're still performing really well. Well, I looked at Ninu on the Penta side. I mean, he was kind of the saving grace on the Willow on, on Serpent Beach. That kind of kept them in that game. It was Klosar on the Victor, of course, that time around, able to find the damage. He's doing it on Cassie this time around. Bugsy is able to add one as well. But all business at 66% already well on their way to point number one. I mean, just being able to control this one, it, it's so incredible for them. I mean, at this point, they're, they're creating such a a zone that Penta don't have anything to do with it. They can't get around it. And the one thing that they were talking about on the desk was this Willow. And so far, they haven't really had to do anything yeah. with the Willow. They've just been, well, that. Well, the Willow's been respawning, I would say, for more than the game has even been going on. Closar already, five streak, make it six, a double kill as Xenos gets one on top of it. Already rounding this final corner is all business. I don't think Penta's gotten a single kill yet. They've been uh, respawning the entire game, and, and that Oof. is confirmed. Zero deaths for everyone on all business. Yeah, that's a big oof. I mean, 5-0 and 2 right now for Klosar. This Cassie, I think, is hitting a lot harder than I, anybody would have guessed coming into this. And he's just holding this perfect angle. I mean, he has been playing out of his mind all day. Yep. But this is, I think, the first standout, top-down, amazing performance Agreed. that he's had. Even though that victor was, was really good earlier on, this is just controlling. And, and yep. There's no one to look at him, no one to really stop him. Ovim gets yoinked right through the doorway right there as Tutu gets the con yet again in this game. A little bit of healing for Corio, just dancing around in that beam, but that's going to wear out here. All business look to make this one 2-0 very quickly. Two Toot smartly brings up the shield, backs off. Gets himself back. Coriel though, oh, the stun right at the perfect time. Bugsy is able to make good on the daggers. Unbelievable as well. Drops the dome shield right onto the payload here, and there's no room for error if you're Ooh. Penta, and all they're finding is error. Ovin's gonna oh. go down in all business. 2-0 on Bright Marsh. These shots coming down from Bugsy were on point. And also, I would I just want to throw out, why would you let Tutu get Khan again? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> this that's, is that's one of those you don't even have You don't even have Atlas to, to try to counter it out. <laughs> I mean, again, so that's that's a fully undying round there yeah. for all business. 
Six zero and six for Closar, three zero and four for Bugsy. But Toot Toot was just as big on the side Boy, there, being able to just seconds. zone him out, do the right. same thing he was doing last game, just now on Bright Marsh. Well, Xenos at the bottom of the damage chart, but uh, Penta. I mean, you, you got four members of all business at the top. No footing in this one yet for Penta. You got Cot twos, Wrecker twos. I mean, everything is going all business's way going into this next mid. And they still have some ultimates ready to use as well. With the scout, maybe pair it with the midnight, get this one started off right. I'm going to be looking at this Fae Flight. What can it accomplish and what can it do? The biggest question on my mind is can he at least find a kill? He's looking for him, but nothing really connecting. A couple of good shots there, but he's going to be low health, getting chased down by Bugsy. Yeah, still searching for their first kill in this game is Penta. Bugsy's going to stall that one right on out with the daggers on to Ninu. Ovim as well finds nothing but death. And as convincing as round one wins, round two much the same. 54% thanks to the fast cap, but no kills for Penta through the first four and a half minutes of this game. Finally, Corio gets one. Ash on to Bugsy, Toot Toot though, zoning out the rest, and that's just a consolation prize. Well, the biggest thing I think at this point is gonna be, can you break the zone? That 81% is gonna turn into 100 real fast, especially with only one person being alive, but Ovim's getting stalled before he can even get close. Toot Toot with another couple kills for himself. And even though they got the one kill, what is that? 13, 10, 16, and 18 there yeah. for the streaks. Really just solid from all business, and this, this Bright Marsh, it's going way faster than all the other maps. I think they just want to end this set. I think things have been very close here. Penta somehow stayed in this game. But all business trying to round this one out, rounding this final corner here. Two minutes left. But, I mean, that, that's longer than the game has been going. I mean, half of the game is what was remaining on the payload timer here. They haven't needed any of that. Seismic crash. Stuns up close are actually a little bit of range in there into the window onto the opposite side through time and space rips through gets one on a choreo midnight as well all business are looking to end this game and Bugsy's just going straight bodyguard trying to lock anybody and everybody into the base there and it's going to be a couple of daggers not quite going to be able to find the full kill but I mean they're just locked away they can't come out if they do well that happens it's too much damage well this game might be over as soon as it starts all business drops the dome shield savage across the board and all business are able to seal the deal. Three straight wins, the last more convincing than the other two maybe even combined. That's a six minute game, yeah. Gore. And all business, they're looking like a competitive team. It's just one of those things. I expect to see more of Penta as the weeks go on in the minor league. I don't think like this, this bad start for them, right? The worst two weeks scenario I think that you could have had is not gonna be representative of what no. we see at the end of the split. But seeing all business start like this, seeing one trick pony start their way, seeing Sour Team, like this is going to be the most competitive region I think we have pretty yeah. much anywhere outside of the PPL. Yeah, we're, we're not used to seeing that. It's normally, you know, top team, three O's, everyone else. And that's just not been the case up to this point. No legs to stand on in this one for Penta. I mean, it's over as soon as it started. You're talking a six minute game in this case. Close our 50K damage in the span of five minutes, 47K for Bugsy. Unbelievable, and Toot Toot continued their performance, and Xenos kind of tied everything up with a nice bow. 70K total healing for their team. A single death in this one, and that's Bugsy. Feeding once again. I mean, the, I think <laughs> as much as you could look at it, like if you just cover up everything except Xenos, like 3-0 and 20 is phenomenal for the Genos. But yeah. I think the 9-0 and 11 there for Closar is, is more telling. 7-0 and 12 for Toot Toot as well, but... Closar was playing angles and, and I think giving an amount of control that they didn't think they were going to have to deal with on the side of Penta. And I think it just kind of slipped them up. That Willow yep. should have been free firing, but Bugsy kept him in yeah. line. And if Bugsy wasn't doing it, then Closar was. It was free firing the walls back in base. I mean, 27 total kills uh, in this case for all business. A again, the healer participating in 23 of those 27. All business, I mean, they, they tie up this set clean. Nice bow, 3-0 over Penta. That's going to do it for Europe. Let's send it back to the desk and hear their thoughts. Well, what a commanding lead from all business all throughout the day. 3-0, taking it pretty easily. Clean sweep. Yeah, I mean, Penta looks like a totally different team because they basically 
are a totally different right, exactly. team. And they're a team that's going to have to figure something out with, with matches like that. Only one kill across the board. And anyway, I think it was some chip damage from Coriel onto Bugsy. So fantastic performance from all business. I think a complete 180 from how they looked last split. So great for them, I think. Yeah, that was just overall just well played. Just like a small little light golf clap right there. They did really good. It's not really going to be to my mic, but really I'm sure good. you can all imagine yeah. at home. Yeah, just like very, very quiet claps <laughs> for all business. The EU bracket is coming to a close, I believe. North yep. America is going to be the next ones that are playing. Here are the current, not only standings, but the progress of how the day has went already. 3-2 for Sour Team, 3-0 for all business. And we have the Shadows in Exile coming up next with Sanguine Esports and 5-Stack Esports playing against each other. Yeah, Penta going... 0-6 oh, after the first two yeah. weeks. It's got to be rough for them. Sour team still keeping their dominance, though. One Trick Pony absolutely put up a fight, but uh, I think this is going to be a great PML season to watch after yeah. seeing these last two games. It's going to be a really, really good upcoming set. The two games it is that we have, the Shadows <laughs> and Exile, it's going to be it's going to be a very, very good. Sanguine versus Five Stack Esports, I just really, really can't imagine like not this, these not being good games. Yeah, of course. I mean, we can take a look at the standings for EU if we wanted mm -hmm. to take one last look at that to see how things have shaken up. Sour Team right now 2-0, establishing their dominance after Penta sh switched their roster around. One Trick Pony all business, both at 1-1, but One Trick Pony has a slight map differential edge being 2 up onto them since all business got 0-3'd and then 3-0'd. And Penta, as you mentioned before, down to 0-2, negative 6 differential, not a map on their side yet. Very unfortunate for them, but they have players that have been there. They have players that can do it, and we, there's a pretty long season ahead for qualifiers. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting seeing what the rest of these teams have planned for us, like with the upcoming two matches it is that we have. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a long day for EU, like Penta giving their best job, like doing their best work, best that they can. All business coming out 3-0, a very, very close game even before that between Sour Team and One Trick Pony. But don't go anywhere yet. Right after this break, we'll get right to the North American bracket. iNAP, powering the control room for the Paladins Premier League. 